Welcome to episode 292, Cyrus Punawala, Vaccine King from India, Nine Lessons. This is an outline of episode 292, lesson 1 to lesson 5. This is an outline of episode 292, lesson 6 to lesson 9. Lesson number 1, start small. His first serum was tetanus and made from horse plasma in 1967. In 67, we were quick to start up a very small scale unit at cost of 5 lakhs of rupees to make a tetanus antitoxin serum, which was in short supply of the country. And then we grew step by step. The serum was and is initially made out of uh, horses plasma, uh, which were the horses that were discarded and being donated by the stud farm business, free of charge to Hapkin Institute. But now, none of our products have got anything to do with uh, horse-based serum or uh, any other blood-connected uh, 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 products. Lesson number two, the Indian government and its bureaucracy is its biggest obstacle. There's been a lot of uh, talk about making India, a lot of emphasis on improving the ease of doing business, getting Indian companies to expand, getting foreign companies to actually set up in India. What do you make of the government's efforts at this point in time? They've done precious little. We're all waiting uh, anxiously mm. for the government to actually lay down the rules and get on with it. Mm. It would help a lot. Huge difference. What are the areas of deficiency They've that you believe? They've done nothing. We mm. don't even reply uh, uh, any suggestions to uh, uh, make single window clearances. Mm. Uh, they haven't made any difference to the bureaucracy uh, loosening up. Mm. In fact, pharma companies all like uh, Biocon and all are moving their clinical trials outside India, mm. which is a huge setback. Mm. India was known to be a good low cost clinical trial registration. Mm. For us, it's very important. We are doing trials all over the world. We've even gone to Bangladesh. Mm. And in the, in, because the Indian government uh, health ministry is giving a lot of trouble. Lesson number three, his biggest breakthrough in late 1990s, WHO accredited Serum Institute of India for export. What was the major step in taking Serum Institute to a higher level? Serum's meteoric rise only started when WHO gave us accreditation. And we got pre-qualified for vaccines such as measles, tetanus, diphtheria, whooping cough, BCG, and uh, later on hepatitis. This gave us an opening for now being able to supply to UN agencies as much as more than 140 countries worldwide. Lesson number four, supportive wife, growth-minded son. And she also considered herself to be my Lakshmi. How involved was Viru in your business interests? She gave me a lot of support and uh, encouragement, especially when things were not looking up. And she was a very strong believer in uh, prayers, uh, be it Parsi or Tirupa. Punawala, what was the last year like without Vilu around? Well, I really missed her much more than I did. You know, it's a tremendous lesson for all those who are uh, uh, take their wives for granted. Well, I started quite early. As soon as I uh, finished my uh, education, I started working full-time with my father. But, um, you know, after uh, uh, studying in the UK, I returned in 2001, and I joined the company full-time. And I always had a passion for what we're doing here, and uh, that grew as, um, uh, as, as the company grew, where we then started expanding into other markets. Lesson number five, plow every penny back into R&D. And as you know, more than one out of every two child that was born in 2010 was administered a vaccine from Serum Institute. Oh, World-class facilities were set up uh, during the period that uh, we started Serum Institute in the late 60s by plowing back all the profits, the company. And uh, that enabled us to have uh, facilities which are R&D were able to improve the technology to such a level that our price was half of what everybody else was supplying. Lesson number six, philanthropic mission. Vaccines not just for rich kids. Serum Institute's uh, philosophy was to have uh, 
a philanthropic approach right from the beginning of making low-cost uh, serum and vaccines. Lesson number seven, business strategy, low price, high quality. I could have profiteered. I thought it is a humanitarian gesture. I'll give a very low price, high quality product. So uh, all these vaccines are within our reach. Once we're there, the big secret of our success is that we not only give you numbers, but we give you the vaccine at one tenth the price. Lesson number eight, no advertising to keep costs low. Don't waste money on advertisement and publicity. With the result that I didn't realize that the entire competition was wiped out. Was stance not to pump money into advertising and publicity a policy decision? Yes, and I wanted the benefit of my philanthropy to go down to the patient instead of the middleman. And therefore, I was fighting the doctors and encouraging governments and hospitals to take uh, the product as far as possible directly so that the benefit would go to the uh, you know, underprivileged children of the world. Lesson number nine, how to filter out 95% of proposals. And um, the one thing I suppose what I have learned is uh, his ability to uh, take decisions on proposals where, you know, there would be a waste of time. Every day we get 10, 15 proposals and it's very important to be able to filter that and, 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 and choose the right one and say no to the others at, an, at a very early stage. Otherwise, you find yourself deploying resources and wasting a lot of time exploring, you know, whether this will work, whether that will work. So that's an important skill to have. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.